I was contemplating whether to post this for a while, but now I'm curious. I'm 24F and I have a half-brother Ethan who is 17. When I was 16, our mother married her new husband and has two kids with him. Ethan's father isn't in his life so he stays with them full time, but I spend more time with my dad and his family because I just get along with them better. I love my mom, but she can be a bit much sometimes, so I rarely see her. Ethan and I text occasionally. It was my mother's birthday a few days ago, and while I was visiting I noticed that Ethan and my newborn half-sibling weren't around. I asked my mom where they were at, and she said that she asked Ethan to check up on the baby while she took a break. We were all in the backyard by the way which is massive. But yeah okay no biggie. But some time later I still couldn't find him, and so I went to Ethan's room and he's rocking the baby while she's inconsolable, and he's crying too because she won't stop. There were diapers and baby formula everywhere, and he was saying that he tried everything but she won't stop. I managed to calm them both down somehow and asked Ethan why he didn't just call someone for help. He said that he's usually really good at this and mom makes him take care of the baby all the time, so he just panicked. He then told me that he helped out with our other half-sister when she was a baby as well and still takes care of her. I was really upset. I mean yes there's nothing wrong with needing a break, but Ethan's a 17-year-old boy. He's not a father or a mother, but apparently, he takes care of our half-siblings more than our mom and stepdad. I walked up to my mom while she was talking to a group of people and basically told her that I can't believe she's dumping all her responsibilities on Ethan. She knew what I was talking about immediately and told me to relax and that Ethan likes it blah blah. I told her that while she was out here having a blast her son was sobbing in his room because of how overwhelmed he was. She got really red and everyone went silent which was awkward, but yeah. I later got a call from my mom saying that she respects my opinions on this situation, but that I didn't need to publicly humiliate her in front of her friends and coworkers. Apparently, her boss was there too, and he's being very cold to her. I don't know I just can't get Ethan out of my head. Am I the idiot? You didn't humiliate her in front of people. Her own behavior humiliated her in front of people, and now she's transferring the blame to you. If she had done nothing wrong, why would she be embarrassed by what you said? Not the idiot. Not the idiot. She sounds like the kind of person to take you out to a nice restaurant to break bad news and then gets passed when you make a scene in a fancy place. There was a line in the last What We Do in the Shadows that made me think of like half the posts in the sub. Stop saying the things that I have done. Not the idiot. Hate to say it, but public humiliation is a good driver for change. Mom is not God. The earth is full of crappy people, and a good amount of them are moms. I would however suggest that you follow up with him to make sure she didn't retaliate against him. I hope she doesn't trip into Ethan about crying and complaining to his sister. I wish that there was a way Ethan could get away from that situation. He's 17, it's worth waiting out the less than a year and giving him housing on his 18th birthday. Hopefully, there's money left over for therapy to overcome the massive guilt trip mom is gonna lay to get her free babysitting back. There will always be a better way to handle things depending on who you talk to. Could you have waited to tell her? Sure. Would she have listened? Likely not. Sometimes the court of public opinion is what people need to wake up. What she is doing is called parentification, and it's not healthy to do to children. It steals childhoods, creates rifts, it's just abusive. I'm going to say you are not the idiot, mainly because poor Ethan was sobbing and doing his best, and is the nanny apparently. Thank you for standing up for your sibling. I know it can be hard to do that, but I know he appreciated that. I'm not sure where you can go from here, maybe find articles about parentification and show them to your mom and stepdad. If you have a good relationship with your dad, talk to him about what you witnessed, what you did and her reaction. Let him know you are worried and not sure how to help Ethan. I wish you all the luck OP. My wife and I were expecting a child in October. We are in our early 30s and have been trying for a child for some time it has been difficult. In February, we discovered that she was pregnant. Obviously, we were over the moon with joy. We began to prepare we did everything we could possibly do to get ready. We planned a baby shower and sent out invitations, we prepared a beautiful room with a custom-made crib by my father-in-law, who is a very talented woodworker, and we were extremely thorough in baby-proofing our home. During the baby proofing, my wife started to suggest that we get rid of my cat, Bubba, who is 12 years old, and I've had since he was a kitten. 
I got him in college, I adopted him, and each of my two sisters adopted another kitten from the same litter. Bubba is extremely affectionate to me so sweet and cuddly. He tolerates my wife but is not affectionate toward her. To strangers, he is not nice. He has never bitten or scratched anyone, but he does a lot of hissing and yowling at people he is unfamiliar with. My wife was afraid that he'd scare the baby, he wouldn't be welcoming to a newborn, or that he'd hurt her. I argued gently but eventually acquiesced. In her 28th week of pregnancy, we sent him to live with my parents. He was not happy there. My parents said he cried all day and walked around meowing 24 hours a day, looking for me. Tragically, my wife and I lost our child just weeks before she was due. We still don't have a lot of answers, and it's painful to get into. We mourned. We were inconsolable for weeks. I still cannot think about it without feeling complete agony and loss. After a month, we returned to some level of normalcy as normal as things could be, anyway. We've started to explore adoption. Last week, I told my wife I was going to pick up Bubba to bring him back home. She exploded. She said that under no circumstances would she allow him back in our house and that I had agreed to have him live with my parents. I missed him. He's been my best friend for years, he's been my loyal companion my entire adult life. She told me that I could pretty much choose between her or Bubba. I told her that obviously, I would choose her, it's not even a question, but that I didn't understand her reasoning and I felt she was being cruel. She'd lived with Bubba for 10 years and there had never been any problem. The adoption process can take 8 to 12 months on average and I'd like to spend that time having Bubba around. We haven't spoken about it since. This is the first fight we've had. Am I being unreasonable the idiot in wanting my cat back? Not the idiot. You should never have to get rid of Bubba. I'm sure for you Bubba is also an important part of the family. Cat's hissing is not a sign of violence but a sign of fear. My sister who recently had a baby has a cat who also hisses at strangers but is cuddly with his owners. Honestly, he can't even tell that her baby is a human at all and only ever sniffs her or avoids her. On top of that, a child will not be afraid of a cat unless they are raised to be or are horribly hurt. A tiny scratch will not traumatize a baby. Not the idiot. But also I'd like to say that adopting a replacement for the child you are mourning is awful too. I'm that adopted child and it's crappy. No idiots here. If this is the first fight you've had, hire a counselor to help you both communicate. No way is it normal for two folks to be together for 10 years and fight after something like this. This is not about Bubba. You've done nothing wrong, OP given the context of the first fight in 10 years, clearly you're not communicating with each other and now something painful has happened and you're fighting about Bubba. About three years ago my dad was injured in a really bad hit and run car accident. He broke just about every bone in his body and left him paralyzed from the waist down. Our relationship has always been really good, but I hate seeing him in pain and admittedly try to avoid seeing him because it just makes me uncomfortable. In November I'm getting married. I've been with my fiancé for four years and he and my dad get on really well. Naturally, the discussion of who was going to give me away came up in the family group chat and I kept silent after I realized my dad would be in a wheelchair. We always talked about him giving me away and having a dance at my wedding and I don't want to be reminded of what could have been at my wedding. I messaged my mom privately and told her I want my uncle to walk me down the aisle as we were incredibly close. She naturally asked why and I told her that my dad is in a wheelchair would add complications to the wedding. The walkway would have to be widened to accommodate his wheelchair and he wouldn't be able to hold my arm or give me a proper hug. She was outraged, called me an ableist piece of crap, and removed me from the group chat. My aunt has since called me telling me my dad is absolutely devastated. Am I the idiot? You're the idiot excluding him from this moment would be an incredibly hurtful and selfish thing to do. And it's a level of hurt that a family may never recover from. You need to make a phone call to your dad Dan. you need to make it now. Apologize and grovel and do whatever it is you need to do to convince your dad that you just had a momentary lapse in sanity and don't know what you were even thinking. That was cold. You're the idiot. What an awful daughter. You avoid him because it is hard on you? What about him? Now you don't want to accommodate him to walk you down the aisle? God, you should be ashamed of yourself. Your fiancé should take a long look at who he is marrying. You're the idiot. I'm having such a hard time wrapping my head around that a person can be this awful to her own dad. 
I hope your mom tells your family what you have said. You need to be properly shamed and you need to sit and think about your own actions. Update. Not that I owe it to anyone, but I thought I'd give you all an update. My boyfriend and I have decided to part ways and I've apologized to my dad.